Welcome to the Sizer online tutorial for the US edition. In this tutorial, we will do a step-by-step -step example inside concept mode using the different features explained in the previous video of this series. Various versions of this project file are available for download in the description of this video. First of all, a good practice to adopt when starting a new project file is to select the desired unit system, which we will define as Imperial, as well as adjust the snap increment, which we will set at 40 inch. We will also set a fire resistance duration requirement of one hour. As for the default values, we will leave them as they are. Once the settings have been defined, we have to generate a grid either manually or automatically in order to be able to start adding columns, walls, beams and joists. For the purpose of this video, we will automatically generate the grid from the edit option in the top toolbar. We will define an additional level from the design option and set it to 20 feet, which will be considered as the roof. Now that the grid lines and levels have been specified, we can insert the columns. On the first floor, the layout of these columns will consist of six columns in two lines with vertical spacing of 15 feet and horizontal spacing of 30 feet. For the exterior columns details, 1, 3, 4 and 6, we will specify a number 2 grade of SPF timber with unknown width and depth, dry service condition and not laterally supported. For the remaining two interior columns, they will consist of stud SPF lumber columns with a 2 inch per ply width and an unknown depth. They will be used in dry service conditions as well and will be laterally supported on the Y axis. As for the walls, we will extend them from one column to the other extreme column in the north-south direction by clicking and dragging the mouse. The wall stud will consist of number 3 SPF lumber walls with 2 inch width and an unknown depth. We are going to detail them with 16 inch spacing, dry service conditions and will be laterally supported on the Y axis. Again on the first floor, three main beams in the east-west direction will be specified each of them resting on opposing columns. The two edge beams will have a 3.3 feet west cantilever with a 10 feet east cantilever, whereas the center beam will have a 3.3 feet west cantilever and a 13.3 feet east cantilever. All of the beams will consist of glue lamp balanced, made with 24F V8DF combination of west species. We will leave the width and depth as unknown. As for the fire resistance criteria, we will specify the number of sides exposed as 3, with a fire endurance rating of 1 hour without protection. Three additional beams will be inserted in our model on each side of the cantilever. The west beam will be continuous over cantilever supports, and the two east beam will be skewed and simply supported. Since they'll be supported by other beams, we first have to change their load transfer number to 1, so that their load will be transferred into the beams running in the east-west direction. The beams added consists of number 2 Douglas fir lumber and ply with unknown width and depth. Now, let's move on with the addition of the joists. Two groups of floor joists will be created, interior floor joists and exterior joists to be simulated as a deck. For the interior joists, they consist of number 1, number 2 SPF lumber with 2 inch width and unknown depth and 12 inch joist spacing. The following information will be checked. The exterior deck joists consist of the same material properties except for the dry surface condition that will be unchecked. They are displayed as follow. To change the J1 interior floor joist direction, you need to select it and specify the other direction from the top toolbar. Similar steps for the roof layout are to be undertaken. That being said, for the purpose of this video, we will skip this part. A copy of the project file saved until this point is available in the description below. In order to view the model in its elevation view, you first need to select a grid line and click the Elevation view at the top toolbar. 
Concept mode allows the creation of slopped members. In fact, inside the grid view, select the grid point that is to be elevated and specify its new elevation to 24 feet. By returning to the elevation view, we can see that we have created a slopped member. Now that the model has been created, we can add loads to the structure. We will start with the first story. In the load view tab, we will define an area load of 10 PSF dead load and a 50 PSF live load. To add those loads, first select area load from the drop down menu, then define the load area by clicking the corners of the intended area. The same load configuration will be applied to the roof with the exception of a 44 PSF snow load instead of the live load. A saved version of this project file is available in the description. See the next video in this series for discussion of the output when the project file is run.